This is What It Takes, a show that peers into the minds of groundbreaking innovators. Want to know how they turn big ideas into realities? Keep watching and listening. And as you do, share your questions with hashtag what it takes and you. A net positive solution to global plastic pollution could be, well, a net itself. Discarded fishing gear transforms into upcycled skateboard decks and baseball cap brims with help from Boreo founder Ben Kneppers. What does sustainability mean in business? Watch to find out. Thank you for making the time to chat with us on what it takes. Can you tell us where in the world you're joining us from as we chat? I'm, I'm in Brazil right now. Uh, my wife is from, from here. It's only fitting that we kick things off with what I'm sure you're used to, elevator pitch. How would you describe what Boreo does in 30 seconds or less? Yeah, it's actually been a while. Um, so. Here we go. Boreo is a company focused on creating a net positive solution to the global issue of ocean plastic pollution. And we do this by working together uh, with fisheries and fishing communities to transform what's been identified as the most harmful form of plastic pollution, being uh, discarded fishing gear, into innovative recycled goods um, that are in a form of upcycling that can do a shared value model to create a net positive solution for the environment, communities, and people. What was the light bulb moment for Boreo? How did you first kick things off? So it was my two friends and I uh, that were working and traveling around the world, um, enjoying every moment we could by a coastline. Um, and we kept seeing this problem of plastic pollution that was plaguing it. And I think the light bulb moment was when we realized the problem of it all was actually an opportunity and how tangible uh, it was to make some real measurable actions to do something about this problem. And when it really clicked was the idea of using the problem as an opportunity to harvest this material into something of value, and in doing so, create some really net positive good impact um, for the environment by eliminating this plastic, making it a resource for high value products, and then driving a business around it that could then scale and kind of use capitalism for good in a way by by maximizing its potential of, of addressing this issue because it's it's everywhere. What sparked your interest in sustainability generally, but in making it a professional endeavor? Yeah, I, it, it really came about um, during my time at Northeastern. I really took advantage of the co-op program and really tried to do everything I possibly could with every experience. And my final co-op, although I was studying mechanical engineering, actually in a refugee settlement in Zambia, and it really opened my eyes to a lot of the injustice um, that a lot of hardworking, honest people in the world are facing today. And it, it drove me to want to get answers. And what I found was the, the sustainability challenge that we're facing today, where we're systematically taking things away at a rate that the natural environment can't restore them. And we're systematically creating societies that are not providing people the right abilities to meet their basic human needs. Once I really got my head around that, I knew it had to be my life's work. Can you tell us what you've picked up along the way? What unexpected things have you had to learn how to do as the founder of a company? At the end of the day, business is about relationships and it's about working together with people. And that goes well beyond my engineering degree. And it's something I've certainly learned along the way. I mean, walking up to fishing villages as a gringo, it it's quite an effort to convince them and learning that process and learning that you need to persevere and, and show your commitment and your willingness to see things through. Um, and that's been really a remarkable experience I've gotten to have leading the program on the ground here in South America. You just talked about persevering. So is there a bump in the road or a particular challenge that you've encountered over the years that Boreo has been you know, a fully fledged business that stands out to you that you're particularly proud of overcoming? Every week is a challenge. Every day is a challenge. Just kind of waking up and what, what's the challenge of the day? It's become that much of a norm. It's part of creating change. Um, and what's really powerful is when you do break through. So making those first uh, fishing communities uh, committed to giving us their end of life fishing nets 
it was quite a confusing process, as you can imagine. When we showed up week after week and, and they, they brought us the nets and, and we put the work in ourselves to get the nets done because we didn't even have the money to pay anyone else. And we brought back the first product. It was a, it was a breakthrough actually we weren't really expecting where it suddenly became something that as much as we were, it was clicking for them that, hey, we got this to work. It was more of a source of pride um, for the communities that this was something that we were making from their their material. And it, it really took off from there where we got a lot more communities um, wanting to participate, a lot more fisheries on board because saw this as, as a reality. And it really took those first really, really tough years and months of perseverance to bring that to a reality. Now we're actually in Patagonia's apparel in their in their a line of jackets and and um, shorts and so forth that that we could never even imagine ourselves when we started. It was all about that perseverance. You got to keep your head down and just do the job in front of you day after day, and it really does pay off when you have a clear vision and path forward. This segment is called Ask the Innovator, and we want to know what tips you have for folks who already are running a global business or who aspire to have one? First, obviously recognizing your skill sets you've developed in whatever you're doing, at whatever you've learned in, in your, your education. But then if you can combine it with your passion, uh, it can really become your life's work. It's no longer going to feel like work. It's going to be something that you will enjoy to do at the end of the day. And that's what I can definitely say with what I'm doing. It's it. I actually truly love my work that I do. And, and uh, because I know that at the end of the day, if I have a really hard day, I jump in the water and realize like at the end of the day, I'm doing something that is helping this place. I love so much for advice for people that are really putting this as their life's work. I would highly recommend first and foremost, obviously having this be something tied to what you're good at. But then if you can connect it also with your passion and the opportunity there is out there, I think it's, it's the best fit you can find in the world. Can you just speak to the significance of the name Boreo? Yeah. So Boreo is actually a, a native Chilean word, means waves in Mapudungun, which is the native Mapuche people of Chile. And we chose it first, obviously, to recognize the country that gave us this opportunity. Um, a lot of people think, oh, we landed on Chile because of the, the, any major plastic pollution problem we have. It's not the case. It's a global problem. And really, the reason we landed in Chile was because they gave us the opportunity. In addition to being a part of the IDEA program at Northeastern, we got a grant from the Chilean government right when we started um, to give us that opportunity to, to bring this program to life. Um, but in addition to that, uh, the science of a wave, it starts with this small disturbance on the surface of the ocean. And it was kind of like us being these three gringos in the South mm -hmm. dealing with an ocean of plastic. And, and this just like a wave with, with more time and energy, it can become this incredible, great force of change. And that's the whole idea tied to Boreo is, is we're, we're, we know alone, we could not do this, but with more time and energy and and bringing these relationships and communities and fishermen together, we can become this great force of change. And the one non-negotiable question <laughs> is, what does it take to run a global, but more importantly, sustainable business? It takes just giving it everything and, and having it tied to a clear, tangible roadmap with a clear ultimate vision to strive for. Um, because you, there's many times where you can get lost, you can get distracted, you can get veered away. You can think this pretty shiny thing in front of you right now is better, but it's actually the ones that keep their heads down and stay true to the course that they had started out on in the first place are the ones that actually, I believe, really get it done. And then last, like they say on how I built this, like timing <laughs> is everything. So you do have to think about that as well. Um, people have become greatly conscious during our time of rise of Boreo and hopefully still very much continuing to rise. Um, but people have become really conscious of ocean plastic and, and that's been a big thing of people being coming more aware of this issue and, and wanting to do something about it. Um, and I think there's all, all plenty of other stories just like that where um, you can get in at the right time and, and things can really click a lot faster than they would at, at other points. Boreo first found a home in Chile, but it's making waves across the globe. We can't wait to see what's next on its list of Second Life wares. Thanks for tuning in. 
Share your questions and ideas for future guests with hashtag WhatItTakesNU on all platforms. This is What It Takes.